Welcome back, everyone, to Masters Tour Montreal. I'm Raven, and joining me this time is Derek, as we are going to bring you through uh, some more matches from round number one. We are going to go into Kalax versus Blitzchunk into a uh, game number three. Looking at it as Kalax two and zero, but Derek, most importantly of all, have you missed me? Oh, it's been a while, Raven. We've uh, been <laughs> doing our best long, without you long. over in APAC, but you seem to have moved on to bigger and better things. <laughs> well, we're, I... we're about to go on. Oh, I was going to say, I do hold it against you. So, you know, uh, okay, you may thanks. think this is a warm reunion. It is no such thing. <laughs> I'll just keep pretending it is. I'll just keep telling myself <laughs> it is. It's fine. Uh, we are going to sort of put one foot back in Asia Pacific, I guess, here in this game, though, because Blitzchung is going to be playing up against Kallax. And as we said, this is going to be game number three. Kallax currently two and zero here. Is that not looking too bad at all? Uh, yeah, it's not looking good for Blitzchunk, but I will say I'm so glad that we're getting to see a look at Blitzchunk on the tempo range because over in Asia Pacific Grand Masters, he has, uh, like Aladdin, he's taken me by the hand and shown me the world of tempo <laughs> mage here because the way he plays this deck, I think, is so cool. It's such a uh, kind of liberal use of his cards. He's not playing for these big combos most of the time in these kind of matchups. He's just playing really tempo styles of gameplay. I think he's got a really good chance of taking the win here because of that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm always interested to see how people pilot this deck because I feel like there are about 20 different ways minimum oh, yes. of how to approach uh, uh, how, you know, even on a turn by turn basis, which is pretty crazy overall. Both players do have access to that Sorcerer's Apprentice, though, which means at any moment it might just pop off. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting, wasn't it? Uh, an interesting spot because you need to think what is what is the point of my apprentice here? What is it actually doing? Is it Cyclone, as Blitzchung has now picked up, which is definitely something to consider? Is it just tempo? You can throw it down to have a 3 2 on the board and try and get your giants a bit cheaper. Uh, I have seen generally Blitzchung play it very liberally, and you have to imagine with this hand, he's gearing up for a turn four play. It does look like it. For a second, I was glancing at Frostbolt. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm mm. a fan in the list anyway, but uh, as an answer to an opponent's uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, but with that double ray of Frost, although you don't get, wouldn't get to freeze a lot of minions, he could just kill it off in that turn, right, with double ray and still have that uh, mirror and uh, mirror image sorry, uh, to be played out and have that all done ready for turn four. So yeah, I do like this overall, but... Uh, Derek Kallax does have Apprentice, and now he's got the Evocation himself, so he can go off in the one of the other ways you can go, not really relying on Mana Cyclone. That's right. It's, it's something that we often forget about, but the benefit of Apprentice isn't just to make Giants cheaper or to make Cyclones get you a bunch of spells. It's the discount itself. Apprentice plus Evocation is the payoff. That is a disgusting combo uh, to throw down. Generally, I find you don't want to go for it quite yeah i think you can afford to go for one more setup turn because when you're hitting it on turn four you can play a secret to fill out your mana if you need to and i think you're much more likely to be able to play at least one or two more spells on top of your usual stuff right and most importantly i think because nothing has happened either side of the board like no one has gone in yet then you, you're not rushed yourself, right? If your opponent isn't doing too crazy things, you don't have to like force the issue. You can wait to do a little bit more powerful if you're not under a lot of pressure. Ooh, getting spicy right. now, Blitzchunk. With yeah, the pop-off turn comes now, and then Giant in hand, very possibly coming down next turn, uh, depending on what the spells that he gets are. I do love the change of pace, though. As soon as I cast it, you know, an APAC player, it's just <laughs> like, just, just cards being thrown out. You yeah, know, it was absolutely insane. I think if I was casting one of the many European uh, grandmasters, we we would have sat and thought about this for a good minute before making this. Turn. Blitzchung's the uh, the fastest of them all. I love to to cast his games, <laughs> obviously because it's nice and quick, and also I just think he plays in such a cool, unique way. Right. And uh, now, as I was talking about four Kallax here, this could be the turn all of a sudden. It's a decent turn to go in with the Apprentice Evocation, but it's also not a bad turn to just go with something like Lab Partner Combustion and again, take another setup turn to clear the hand. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad at all. Honestly, uh, generally, at a glance, you would say that, okay, there's a good response here with his own sorcerers. Mm. But I agree. The combustion is it's just a good use, especially being able to clear all the, off the sorcerers. Nice positioning, though, for, for Blitzchung, Very of course, true. with that uh, the mirror image. But I, I do like it. Just lab partner combustion looks really solid to me. Yeah, Kallax here, I think, 
think he's maybe looking at holding on to his lab partner here because obviously you sacrifice one mana of spells that you could be throwing down in exchange for potentially, uh, you know, much more clear power because every arcane missiles, arcane breath, arcane explosion, all of those cards get much, much better with a bit of added spell damage. So I, I definitely don't begrudge Kellex for this at all. Yeah, it's definitely a, a tough one to manage, I think, and I've found myself never really deciding on what I want from it. Mm. But when you do an invocation turn, there's always that question of, do you want potentially the stronger turn, or do you want the more options with more mana available right. and more cards? And it's really tough to, to really handle that balance, I think. Meanwhile, though, Blitzchunk's just slammed down his 4-7, and suddenly he has uh, quite a, a good lock on the board right now as a lot of the early game in mage matchups are just yep. those like little two health minions that get each player takes in turns to ping off. But now Blitzchunk, especially with that power of creation, not quite now, but in the near future, it's looking to be pretty strong as just an onboard focus here. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is a, a very Blitzchunk style of game here that he's going for, throwing down plenty of stats right on oh. the board instead of setting up for greedy combos. And while it's not the most insane evocation there, it's still enough cheap spells, I think, to be locking down this board and keeping him well in the lead. And already you get to see the power, like you were talking about, holding on to that lab oh. partner means that this spell damage makes this clear very clean indeed, and maybe just opens up Kallax to hold on to that Ray of Frost. He didn't have to double cast it, of course, and which right. means he gets to just have more flexibility going forward because he kept hold of the lab partner. Counterspell, always a nice secret to get in this matchup, even if they have an arcane missiles to kind of throw away into it, Arcane yeah. Missiles is a pretty big deal, actually, in this matchup. So every spell matters, and when that counter spell is going to lock one out kind of for free, it's a pretty big deal. Such a minute difference there as well with Kallax going for the counter spell over the Mirror Entity, because we can clearly see up against Blitzchung's hand, the counter spell could be insane, but the Mirror Entity also probably would have been absolutely ridiculous right. against this board. Like, he might have just had a Shenvala on the board. <laughs> and then frozen Blitzchung's board, Oof. built a bigger board of his own. Why not? Yeah, it's starting to come together for Kallax, isn't it? It's one of those hands where you, you cheat so much mana. He got a ridiculous amount of discount in this game and will continue to do so. But for what? How does he actually close this out into a win? The this is it exactly for me. These cards look great. The board looks good. The hand, great. The secret, great. But when does he lethal Blitzchung? That's my mm -hmm. question. Whereas look at Blitzchung, although he does have this power of creation that right now would get counterspelled, maybe luckily for Blitzchung, he can't cast it yet, which means he might have time right, to draw right. a spell, check for the secret that he might have a read on already, because he has played minions into it. And uh, you know, if he gets his power of creation off Ras, fantastic as well. <sighs> For a second, I was like, is this ever just Apprentice Conjurer's call <laughs> secret just to open up Power of Creation next turn? And uh, quite rightly, I think Blitzchung answered, no, no, it's not. Stop being oh, stupid. <laughs> I've missed casting with you, Raven. Never in a million years would Gia <laughs> say something like that. Never. Exactly. And you know what? You've been missing out, haven't you? You don't get to you know, laugh at stupid suggestions if no one makes stupid <laughs> suggestions. I uh, provide a service, basically. Much appreciated. Uh, the draws that we're looking at now really for Kallax is like a single top deck is the one Arcane Intellect in his list. Even Mana Giant, again, like it, it may as well be a full cost 8-8 at this point because he just has right. so much mana left over. He needs to hit some of the power cards. AI, Jandis, he maybe Raz. Primordial Studies as well. There are a few gems there, mainly as your Explorer yeah. and the Elemental I never remember the name of, but that discovers a <laughs> spell also. So, you yeah. know, th there is things he can hit, uh, even if it's a bit of a long route to get to them. Uh, but right now, this is the, the fear factor where, although Kallax had some strong turns and you know, generally was kind of winning, uh, Blitzchung just has the better value play so he can go longer. Very reminiscent of whenever we get a strong aggro deck, it always evolves to be slightly slower and slightly slower because normally mm. in the mirrors, the slower one wins. Very strong read here from Blitzchung as well on the counter spell. We saw that in two parts, obviously not playing the power of creation and then not picking the quite juicy looking rolling fireball as well. 
Dawson's Apprentice uh, conjures did happen, Derek, so who's <laughs> laughing now? <laughs> now, okay, that is the Raven moment. That's what I was looking Boom. for. The dumb, dumb suggestion that just turned out to work. It always pays off, honestly. It's <laughs> great. It's, it's like a terrible superpower, isn't it? Like, that's what I've got to deal with right now. Uh, well, all right. The big one play spell. of Santa Cl- uh, Mana Cyclone. <laughs> Going for just one spell. Polymorph. Uh, Polymorph was not it, was it? Yeah, that's not really the one. Like, I guess you poly a 3-2 here, because you can quite clearly say if they have any kind of decent effect whatsoever, they're just going to be winning the game. Okay, I, I guess that, that's the trade-off, right? And fair enough, because yeah. I was wondering, like, do you need to polymorph? Because you can't actually value trade, right? With the way the minions yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. the one make having two, uh, one health. But it did proc his Draconic, uh, so that's a pretty big deal. Now he just has a 6-6, six, six, and Blitzchung has to do something to fight that off. But, oi, but oi, oi. rewarded the power, uh, power of creation. Absolutely huge. Yeah, that is disgusting trading off the dragon i think is worth it just to play around any kind oh, of ability yeah. to generate fireball evocation whatever and this is the big deal you can see these trades sort of play out the trade in then um and yep. then just have the four five trade into the two two attacks uh but then there's the big point here is this conjures if honestly if anything lives for blitzchunk conjures is fine there's yeah. arcane intellect to keep the the cycle going it's such a huge deal here it was kind of interesting there, wasn't it? Because Blitzchung hasn't necessarily won the game at this point. Kallax can get back to a point where he's winning on board, uh, at which point Blitzchung could say, okay, I'll let you have the six damage and I'll stick a Conjurer's Calling target. Uh, but this way is, I think, on average, just a little bit safer to play around any of that burst that can right. come through. That's the thing. I think even in absolute worst case scenario, if Blitzchung had to conjure the two drop, yeah, I think that's still fine, right? If like Kallax could remove one minion, he still has Arcane Insight. Now he has Jandis. Absolutely <laughs> huge. He can c- conjures that. Yeah, I mean, I think even if he literally hit, uh, you know, double chromatic egg there, he'd still be winning just because he's <laughs> yeah. Hunter is calling oh. his Jandis. And he hits Insane. the Raz as well. Primordus, please. Okay, Steward of Scrolls. That's the name of the card. I couldn't remember. <laughs> uh... Rolling Fireball. Ooh, Lizard Texas is blast. too expensive. Kills the Raz, I suppose. Hmm. I mean, isn't it just the best one? I guess he can yeah. take... I guess, and there's an argument for Brain Freeze because then he can ping the 4-4, four four, which is almost certainly the image. But Probably, yeah. Is that better than killing the Raz? Oh. <laughs> Uh, both are terrible. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Neither of these are winning cards right now for Kallax, unless he forgot and there are no minions at all left in his deck. <laughs> it's just gold when he gets it. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Mm. He's thinking well, through his outfit. I'm pretty sure it's not draconic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's probably actually thinking about pointing this face right now that i think about it because he can go face with this and hope to go like wand maker into fireball and then deliver lethal well, in a couple of turns yeah i was also going to suggest this because this yeah. means the steward doesn't get traded into that easily uh, as well it would require a ping and the raz or something like that uh, and also the apexis blast can almost certainly still go face next turn right so i i, I do like that ping overall because he has the mana next turn regardless but now the ping on the gurubashi this is hearthstone 2014 action going on right now oh yes taking it old school here tundra rhino and the uh, gurubashi should be enough i think here to close this one out because apexis blast face cyclone and then nova frost nova yeah i think that's the that's the out really here for kallax and then he has to go generate fireball exactly uh off the next card yeah. i think in some d- does ice barrier game there? uh he i don't think it does th- no because he can ping his own gurubashi again so ice barrier right. you know. oh. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> am i wrong let's the redo the maths here pinged. again now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. i think the spell damage from the lab partner makes it too big I'm not wrong, K, right? I think this is... 
5, 8, Six. uh, 16, one off? No, it's right. Yeah. The spell damage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, spell damage go. perfectly yeah. closes out. <laughs> I questioned myself then, Derek, but yeah, Blitzchung takes the win there, and we did just see that although Kalexer had some pretty strong turns, he just didn't get the card draw, and that's is one of the weaknesses of this mage list, isn't it? Or of just the archetype in general. Sometimes you can be forced into spending resources, and without access to an evocation that's strong or just card draw in general, you can fall behind when the when the matchup's so close, right? And it's very board focused as the mirror is. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to attribute it to uh, some good play there from Blitzchung, as I was hyping it up to, and I do think he handled it very well. Uh, for the most part, though, he just drew the high-value cards, and Kalex drew basically none of them over the course of the game. It is the downside of going for a list that includes one Arcane Intellect and doesn't include the uh, Spellkin version that Orange has been knocking around. It's quite a low-value right. list overall. Uh, and you can hit those kind of draws a lot of the time. Maybe it would have been a different game if you picked a, a mirror entity instead of the counter spell. I think that's where the real decision point starts to affect the game. But he's got another shot. He can try and take down the Druid, a matchup which uh, I quite like on the Mage's side. I think it's an interesting matchup and it's fairly close. It really is as well, because um, when Kallax is... I'm just going to give a quick check. Yeah, th this does worry me a little bit. Kallax actually isn't running any Firebrands, which for me are like the mm. really powerful card to play into the early Druid turns, uh, if they can go for that Guardian Animals, or even just an, an early minion, uh, uh, you know, one of the five drops, then the Firebrand can be pretty powerful in that. There isn't any of those, but he is playing that one Devolving Missile, as you can see in his opening hand, which also helps a lot. Yeah, Blitzchung's inclusion in the list, which I love, I think if you're not playing the Mali Druid, it's, it's core in the list now of Broomstick, uh, does help that a little bit, you know, because you can go Twilight Runner and then rush it, Lake Thresher and run it, uh, so that the, uh, the Devolving Missiles is a little bit less effective, all things considered. Yeah. Does mean that you are waiting a turn sometimes to do that, though. It does uh, delay it if you are mm. going to choose to play around it. I think a lot of the time most players will just play out and hope it's not there, especially with no firebrands to, say, punish the uh, the runner anyway. Kind of cool sequencing here from Kallax, where he decided to go for the one maker first, then draw a card, because it's very likely to still draw on two cards off the cram session. The interesting thing now is whether he wants to go Apprentice first and then the cram right. session to kind of tempo out a 3-2 here. And given that he's got the second one in hand, I really like this line. I like it too, and there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one, there's an element of that read of going the double, you know, innovate does conveniently lead Blitzchung into a five drop turn, mm. which means it's unlikely he can deal with this Apprentice and develop a minion. Also... Yeah. Uh, Blitzchung, although he's playing two nature studies, he isn't playing any natural crystal powers in his list, mm. which is the very, which is the, the scary one for me, right? Like one mana kill your apprentice, move on. Uh, that is the, the fear factor. And he isn't playing it in his list. So uh, I really like this a lot. And suddenly second apprentice evocation is available. Derek, are you excited? I mean, this is just so <laughs> disgusting. The missile's perfectly taking this out. Really doesn't matter what is generated there at all. Evocation for who, who even knows how many spells it'll be getting at this point. Yeah, and, and again, this is just very interesting. Double Ray of Frost clears the 2-3 and opens up a slot in his hand. Playing the Apprentice first opens up a slot in his hand. Yeah. But there's also an argument for playing Evocation before you play the second Apprentice. It's... I mean, I, I like throwing it's, down something here. I, I don't really... See, like, I can see the argument for holding on to Ray of Frost, I suppose, to give Freeze. But I just want every extra spell you can possibly <laughs> generate here. Oh! That's so bad! That's pretty bad. Oh. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, that is honestly one of the worst evocations I've seen. Yep. Maybe you can Do get you something... Apprentice? Wand Thief here can generate a spell that could be... A secret, sorry, that could be counter spell. <gasps> So tempted. Oh, yes! Saul would go nuts if he saw this! <laughs> and I mean, honestly, it's pretty filthy, assuming his board doesn't get cleared in the next couple of turns, which what? it's unlikely to with his very nice positioning. And that's it. This mirror image is just making this turn even more incredible from Kallax Boy, because yo, the mirror yo, yo. image is guarding the apprentices perfectly. Room <laughs> does nothing here, basically, on its own. Oh, my. Oh, even Ooh. card draw now. 
what do you even do here? It's all so <laughs> powerful. Derek. You do oh everything. God. All right, yeah, let, let's draw three cards. That sounds like a good way to start doing some yeah. broken combos with the apprentices. For, for kind of zero mana as well, which seems pretty good. And that's the thing, right? Just because Kalax has the two one-mana apprentices doesn't mean you have to chuck everything down now. Yeah, it means yeah. he has a second wave, so he doesn't. He can actually wait and go a little bit bigger later. The key problem now is this Thresher needs to either be frozen or die. And uh, by the looks of his hand, it looks like he's going to be frozen for this turn. Yep. He oh, gonna, is he actually going to double? Go oh, okay, he's going to kill it off. Yeah, just trying to juice up his uh, Cyclone that little bit more now would be that's true. my thinking. Yeah, clear out all the spaces you can, and then just hope you to hit the good stuff. Are you ever Ray of Frost your own uh, minion type of gamer? Derek? Often. Usually it's a, uh, a spell wing that I end up Ray oh, of Frosting, but there are opportunities for it. Ball for 10. <laughs> okay, that's more like it. Zero mana Pyroblast and freeze your opponent. Uh, yeah, I'll put that in my deck. <laughs> well, Blitzchung, uh, got a bit of work to do this turn. Uh, um... So, and if he plays Guardian Animals, he can't hero power. I mean, you can complain about Druid cheating mana here. It's playing a Guardian <laughs> Animals on turn 5 here. But if he does it, he just instantly dies 100% of the time. Oh, we can go for uh, Innovate, right? Okay, Innovate Nature Studies into Crystal Power, I suppose, is or, the best thing he can possibly hit. Bloom could have allowed him to at least... Uh, I mean, sure. it would have been hit through anyway. What a crazy game, basically, Derek. Kallax is going to take the series. Blitzchung did start to fight back, but it wasn't enough. And honestly, I don't think anything was going to be good enough against that kind of mage game. You just don't win those. Yep, I think very, very nicely done there by Kallax. He under, understood the Tempo Apprentice was definitely the way to go. Knew that there was going to be a lack of reactivity on the side of Druid, which you're always looking to exploit as the Tempo Mage. And showing, you know, you don't need the Giants, you don't need Jandus. Just going for a, a kind of pseudo-zoo approach, I suppose. Yeah. Going all out with the, the minions there at the start was super spot on. I really like the play from Kallax, and I, I hope he does well in the tournament, because he's uh, deserving of that GM spot, in my opinion. Yeah, really strong player, and he's off to a strong start, but that doesn't mean round one is over there. All the games we've got for you so far, but there's plenty more where that came from, as well as updates from the scores from round one, of course. But for now, we are going to go to a quick break while we set up our round number two matches. So don't go anywhere. This is Masters Tour Montreal, and we'll be right back with some more games. Masters Tour Montreal Online is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. 